Oh damn, I really missed that intro. Hey guys, this is Titan and welcome back to Widerstein. And I can't believe it myself, right? So this is the 31st episode of Widerstein after, I think, four months of break. But now that Preston is over and all those four episodes I had in stock are done, it's, it's about time we move back home. And this is what we're gonna do in this episode. Now the reason that this episode took me so long um, was mainly that um, I had I, I really struggled with um, the creation of the area we are going to do in this episode. And I really had that feeling that when I loaded the game and I saw what I uh, what few buildings I already had and what the area looked like, my sort of inspiration vanished and it so to say it just didn't it it, it it didn't feel right right so it it just didn't flow if you get what i mean so what i did in the end uh, a few days ago was just scrapping everything i did so far in this area here and go for a completely different approach and as you'll see in this episode i succeeded in that task so my initial plan was to make like a light industry commercial district here um, um, on that um, on a peninsula in the river in the river bend. So like um, a modern district where um, commercial and light industry um, uh, yeah companies would settle, which um, many cities have that nowadays. As I think all around the world, not only in Germany. And I already had like a, a perfect pattern and um, perfect example of it, but I just couldn't tr translate it into um, this area at least. I, I just couldn't. I, For some reason, my inspiration vanished when I tried and tried and tried it. So um, I sc scrapped it all and went for an approach that is very close to the um, to the real life location of this area here with like some fields um, a small village a small farm and all that and I think it was it definitely was the right decision to do that so I think you already got it from my explanation now on the topic for today are some farm fields, um, two farms, a small village, um, you know, rural stuff. And this sort of topic will um, be with us throughout the next, uh, the next few, maybe even the next five, six, seven episodes. Of course, um, always with a bit of a different approach, but. Um, as the city of Wederstein is basically done, we'll concentrate on rural life and on the surroundings of Wederstein for, for now. Now what I did in the start of this episode now was like a small modern um, residential district. You can see that on the houses I chose here and on the uh, streets I chose here. Those are modern houses and fairly modern streets like they would be in um, yeah, contem contemporary uh, residential districts. So this is like, um, or this area here maybe got um, got constructed just like 10 or 15 years ago as the probably one of the most recent um, additions to the city of Widerstein. And uh, yeah, you see those uh, modern residential districts, these. Um, modern settlements very often outside of um, mid-sized um, German cities and I think it's um, it's definitely interesting to have it here. Now I again used the um, French suburban houses Los Gecko made in the versions I edited for um, this series here meaning that I added some fences, um, some pavement, flowers, whatever, nothing that special but just that I don't have to do everything in-game I um, loaded them up into the um, into the 
asset editor and edit these props there. But I also used um, Avanya's European Suburbia houses. And to be more precise, I used those versions she uploaded to the workshop herself. So that if you own that um, content creator pack, which I definitely um, advise you, not only because the assets are great, but also you um, helping a fellow asset creator. Um, but if you own that pack, you can uh, subscribe to these houses on a workshop too. And that way you then get versions with, um, with well, workshop props rather than, let's say, not so nice looking um, vanilla props that are included in the, in the pack itself. And so this is really nice and these houses certainly fit um, the area we're doing here very, very well. Aside from that, we're gonna do a lot of fields today and you, you see that a lot of fields. And when we do that, um, well, I'm gonna explain a bit more um, why I'm doing this and how I finally achieved um, that that realistic farm and field look that I struggled with for so long. For now, um, I'm just gonna do like the, the, the rough layout of this area here. You will see, however, that I had that I had to cut quite a few um, or quite a quite a lot of things out of this episode because um, what I cut for you into like 30, 32 episodes or so um, uncut was like I think 50 episodes as every so often with my projects here in Wederstein I do way more than I should do I think and I have to cut out quite a lot of stuff still I think I kept like the spirit of everything in here and you see me doing everything at least once. And what I'm doing now is a good example for that. When I looked at the real life area of um, the area we're doing here, um, I quickly saw that the, the style of buildings that is used in the area and that I would also like to use in the area isn't available to the workshop. And as I definitely didn't have the time to, uh, to model them myself, I thought well, how can I do these um, these farms? And the idea I got was just use um, a half timbered house of mine and PO. And so what I what you're seeing here now is a sort of farm building from Wig 4000 from England, and I am just adding the second floor. Um, uh, from one of my half timbered houses that yes, I know it's not in workshop yet, but don't worry it will be and it will be somewhat soon at least and then the two uh, Yeah, these two sides of the building here. I am covering with um, wood because that's how we're done um, in around the region here and as I definitely want to keep the look of that original region in which Wederstein lies, meaning the um, Elbe Valley and sort of East Saxony on the border to Bohemia uh, or to the Czech Republic, as I want to keep that look um, that is so familiar to me, I yeah I edited um, that building with PO to give it a more uh, give it a look that more resembles that a realistic look here. And when I said that, these power lines I'm, um, yeah, I'm plopping here are another example of that look. Now we are here in, not only in rural Germany, but also in, um, yeah, in sort of East Germany, former like um, Warsaw Pact region. And so you still, especially in the rural fields, see a lot of um, yeah, a lot of things that resemble that history and these concrete um, power lines uh, definitely do that and they definitely add some sort of flair here it's yeah in in rural germany and i think in yeah in, in rural areas all around the world 
these um, power lines that um, yeah, these overground power lines are um, visible everywhere and so I definitely had to do that here too to yeah just get an authentic look of everything we're now doing the next um, set of fields and as you hopefully noticed I edited the, um, the, the, the sort of range of visibility for these fields for these POs. The reason is that normally when you zoom out decals fade away and become invisible which is very annoying of course and which hindered me for quite a long time to use decals for farms which still were basically the only thing to get some good looking um, farm fields. Now that we have um, both farmers mod you lot However, we can we can use decals, and the thing I'm using or I'm doing is that I used um, his mod U lot to um, to put the decal visibility distance to up to 10,000 meters, so that hypothetically I can zoom out by 10,000 meters and the decals are still visible, and because of that. I finally can use all those fancy farm decals on a workshop and they won't fade away um, within sort of medium distance. And well actually PO isn't necessary for that by itself but PO just um, enables me to use all these um, decals and when I turn them into POs I not only can give them a different color um, but much more importantly of course I am um, they don't count to the problem, which, as I think you all know, is very helpful in this game. With its, I think, 65,000 um, props, you can set, or you can place um, maximum. Uh, yeah, it's it's a real help to turn some of them, or many of them, actually, into POs. And of course, as I do it in, I think, almost every episode some backyard detailing which while in the city it just adds a bit of flair and makes the area more just more realistic here on in the rural setting it actually is important to um, do some backyard detailing at least I noticed that for me that without some detailing in the backyards and in the just general lawn meadow areas um, it just looks empty it's not that it looks good but not alive enough it really looks empty and so yeah in these rural settings backyard detailing is really important at least I thought so feel free to um, tell me if you feel otherwise but um, again as you saw it's so often from me my usual backyard detailing I cut quite a lot of it out and only kept like a general feeling of backyard detailing in this episode. What I'm doing here is like some I call it some strange oddity I noticed in the um, in the real version of this um, area here which is like this weird curve in this otherwise completely straight road here and I have absolutely no idea why this curve is there my guess was that it's just like to um, forcefully cancel or to forcefully um, to force the drivers on the road to um, lower their speeds here but as this is a rural road and technically 100 kilometers per hour are allowed I don't really see the point of that still I thought it's really interesting to have that curve in the road there and so I of course um, also um, made that in my Wederstein version of this area here if you in fact know what um, what this is for, feel definitely free to write that to me in the comments. 
Also, um, you will see quite a lot of, um, in the next episodes, you will see quite a lot of um, road detailing, as I'm doing here with road signs and delineators, uh, which is just, while it's, you know, while these road markings and, and signs are definitely very tiny details, I think they add so, so, so much to the um, general feeling and to the yeah, to the ambience of the area that I think it is definitely necessary. And with all the road stuff we're doing here, I really have to say this, I don't think he watches my series, at least he never said so. Um, I really have to say a huge, big, the biggest thanks to Mac Welshman. What he did with these um, rural roads, of course for um, Great Britain, but um, they look, actually they look perfectly well for Germany as well. What he did with these rural roads here is just beyond everything. They look amazing and I think in terms of rural roads we didn't really have anything so far on the workshop and what he did with this set is, is like without words and I can only say my greatest thank you. Uh, thank you for that. What bothered me a bit with this whole area or what well I thought it might bother me was that when I plop all these fields and a farm there and da 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 dee 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 um, it all is very static and so um, I gave my best to um, yeah, to try to make it look more um, lived in, so that it's not just static, but there are there are actually people moving and also farm animals moving. Because since the industry um, DLC, we also have some farm animal spawners. These animals don't look the best, to be honest, um, and um, there aren't that many animals. I think we have cows. Pigs, sheep. I think it's only those three animals. But um, just having a few walking animals, actual walking animals, I'm plopping them right now here, these spawners, um, just adds a lot already. And yeah, it's definitely a great um, addition for rural country life. And this sort of also is the reason why I just a few seconds ago, and you will see that in a few minutes again, um, is why I placed that vanilla horse farm. Just because it has those, I think, two horse animations on that plot, um, which by itself is of course not that much, but these two animated horses at least sort of give the, yeah, give the, 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 the idea of moving animals here, which um, is really great. A lot of the props I'm using here, um, I sadly have to say so, aren't uh, yeah, available to the public on the workshop. They are on the workshop, but um, the creator hasn't released them. And maybe he will, maybe he won't, I can't say for sure. In general, of course, if you're curious about anything I used here in the series, um, feel free to check out the um, link collections down in the description and you will find everything I used here as long as it's available to the public. Some things are just local, some things are on the workshop but not public, but in those cases, just as I did now, um, I, try to, I try to warn you.
We're coming now to one of the favorite things um, in this episode, which are the, well, a very small detail, of course, but which are these um, signs that, um, um, that these signs that, um, that mean that you enter the municipality of Wederstein now. And these are on every uh, yeah, city border in Germany. And I think most um, cities in the world do it like that, or most countries in the world do it like that. And yeah, I, I don't know, I felt like I really have to add this tiny little detail to give it the, uh, the ambience I want. So what we have now is here starts the municipality of Wederstein belonging to the county of Sächsische Schweiz Osterzgebirge which is like the original um, county here and that Wederstein is a große Kreisstadt meaning a big um, county city meaning um, the, the seat of the um, head of the council. I also just plopped yeah, well, it was visi visible for just a few seconds, sadly. I also plopped a small Welcome to Wederstein sign. And this is a wooden, uh, a wooden sign um, that was probably built by the um, citizens of Wederstein themselves to, yeah, to just welcome outsiders to the city. And you have the, um, the coat of arms of the city on that sign and you have the um, partner cities of Wederstein also um, named there. In case you haven't really noticed that sign um, in the process of um, the creation now, I try to really focus on that sign in, in the cinematics in the end so you definitely won't miss it, so don't worry there. And this sign I used there was an idea I got in the creation of this episode. I had the idea, <gasps> damn. I want such a sign. And so yesterday I went into um, my modeling tools and quickly made, well quickly, it took me like I think five hours, uh, but relatively spoken, quickly um, made that sign just so that I can use it in um, on the city borders um, that I think we'll do in the next few episodes. Because yes, it just feels nice to have these, uh, these tiny unique details here that um, that actually say Wederstein and uh, yeah it, it felt really nice. This area here belongs to that um, horse farm and uh, what I'm doing here is like the old uh, farm building and to the left is the modern or more modern farm building where all the horses are uh, which is just a tiny um, Thing, but it's just nice to not only have general or, or, or generic farms but also like here is a horse farm and maybe in another episode we're going to do a milk farm or dairy farm and to uh, yeah make a bit of uh, have a bit of variation here and so what um, I imagine was like the, the old building of this um, horse farm was turned into a restaurant. Maybe they also have some rooms they um, went for tourists. And then next to that is like the, the modern building of the horse farm where the horses are. So people um, from the city maybe have their horses there. So they can uh, go for a ride sometimes. And this area of the horse farm is now the last thing we are doing in this episode. So... Yeah, I don't think there's any much more to say about this episode. I wanna thank you for being back with me in Wederstein. And it honestly feels great to be back here. I thank you for watching and if you are new to this channel if you are new to my channel or if you came to my channel through the city of Preston and what I'm doing here is what I usually do um, European stuff if you've liked that um, I would be very happy if you would re remain a visitor to my channel and or a viewer to my channel and yeah feel free to subscribe and hit the tiny bell icon to be notified when I upload the next video
then you can also hop on on my discord server uh, where you can get in, touch in, get in touch with me or others who follow uh, my works and yeah ah, it just feels great sorry if you really want to support me you can do so on patreon and as uh, you can do so on Patreon and get early access to assets or videos as a sort of a thank you from my side. Just as this video hasn't been in early access for, well, at least one and a half days. It's the best I can do, sorry. But still a huge thanks to the people who support me on Patreon, especially in these times. It's, uh, it's amazing what you do there for me. Now that's it from my side. Um, there's not really much more I can say here and cinematics will start in just a few seconds. I hope you liked them as much as I did. So thank you for watching. Stay healthy, stay tuned and see you in next episode. Have fun guys. Bye.